हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर कनिष्क मेहता असोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ नी पेन हेड एंड नेक सर्जरी अमेरिकन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज उदयपुर वी आर डूइंग अ सीरीज ऑफ क्लासेस फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्स एज यू नो एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू सम कॉमन एक्सरेज दैट आर आज फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एग्जाम्स नाउ वी नो दैट दिस इज द एरा ऑफ हाई एंड रेडियोलॉजी वेर वी आर रिलाइंग अ लॉट ऑन सी टी स्कैंस एम आर आईज पेट स्कैंस स्पेशलाइज एक्सरेज लाइक बेरियम स्वेलोज गैस्ट्रोग्राफिन स्टडीज स्टिल कन्वेंशनल रेडियोलॉजी हैज गॉट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन आवर फील्ड ऑफ ऑटो राइनो लाइनिकोलॉजी बिकॉज इट इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी इकोनॉमिक सेकेंडली रेडिली अवेलेबल थर्ड गिवस अस अ क्वाइट इनॉमस इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट कॉमन पैथोलॉजीज विच वी सी ऑन अ रेगुलर बेसिस of course the disadvantage of conventional radiology is we do not get detailing as we would have uh, liked so ct scan mri give us a better uh, detailing of minute structures that we may miss on uh, conventional radiology today we are going to study some common x rays that can be asked for undergraduate examination we are going to start first with x ray for uh, otology that is your mastoid x rays now the commonly used uh, view for mastoid x ray is uh, schuller's view now schuller's view is kept when the patient is lying down on the x ray bed and the beam is from 30 degrees oblique lateral uh, so the beam is coming from the lateral end of the ear and it is at the 30 degrees with the horizontal right so there are other views also that can be taken like for example we can take laws view which is 15 degrees with the horizontal submento occipital view and similarly other views are there but the commonest one is the schuller's view schuller's view is preferred over laws view or other views for mastoid x ray because uh, we get a good idea about uh, the key areas on radiology the key area on radiology is the aditus antrum and attic now this is the area which is our which is commonly called as the key area of radiology because exactly here is where the cholecystoma is starting so many a times you may have a patient who is having posterior superior quadrant retraction pocket or attic retraction or you may feel that there is a cholecystoma but there is no flank uh, frank uh, discharge foul smelling scanty to label it as cholecystoma because the disease hasn't been very aggressive yet and that is the time when we need to see where exactly has the disease extended on radiology and that key area is attic aditus and antrum which we do not see very well on laws view so that is why we prefer to take uh, schuller's view which is at 30 degrees angle and gives a good idea about the key area of course the view is never taken exactly from the lateral view it is a little oblique view because that will make sure that your both side of mastoid axis do not overlap each other otherwise what will happen is if you are taking a view from exactly lateral view this mastoid and this mastoid will overlap each other and you will not be able to understand ex exactly what is the pathology so that is another important thing that you should remember in your exams that we are going to take a lateral oblique view schuller's view which is 30 degrees now what do we normally see on the x ray we are going to discuss right now now when you see the x ray you can make sure that the first thing is the side nowadays there is a labeling right and left so of course it is not a big issue for us to identify which is the right side which is the left side now first of all let us understand what is the normal thing that you are seeing then we will talk about the pathology so what you can see here is the temporo mandibular joint now this is the condylar process of the mandible and the temporal bone which is forming a ball and socket joint over here just behind this is the external auditory canal right external auditory meatus which is continuing with the external auditory canal now behind this we all know is the roof of the uh, middle ear and the mastoid axis which is called as the tegmen or the sinus uh, dural plate be above this is the dura whereas behind we can see is the sinus plate now this is different di dividing the mastoid axis from the sinus uh, which is the intracranial uh, sigmoid sinus right so this area is our area of interest so we can see the temporomandibular joint we can see the external auditory meatus 
we can see the dural plate, the sinus plate and the pneumatization of the mastoid air cells. The same thing we will see on the left side also. We will see the temporomandibular joint, the condylar process of the mandible, the temporal bone, the ball and socket joint, the external auditory meatus, the sinus dural plate and the sinus plate. Right? Now, we all should understand that in any normal individual, around 80% of the mastoid air cells have got pneumatization, that is honeycombing appearance, right? So honeycombing appearance that you see over here is the normal pneumatized mastoid air cells. But 20% people do not have a good pneumatization. So congenitally also 10% people can have a sclerose mastoid and 10% people can have a Diploic. Diploic means it has some part of it is pneumatized, some part of it is uh, sclerosed. So 80% will only have a well pneumatized mastoid air cell. So now let us assume that the patient has come to us with a right sided pathology. So we are assuming a right sided uh, chronic suppurative otitis media. Still, whenever we do the mastoid air cell, we do order a mastoid air cell of both the side, that is right and the left. That is because we do not know if this sclerosis is because of mastoiditis or this this is those this is uh, this patient is that 10% patient who has got congenital or developmentally a sclerotic mastoid. So we'll order both the sides so that we know that now this patient has got this pa particular patient who had come to us had presented to, to us with right sided CSOM tubo tympanic variety. But if you look at his mastoid, both the side of mastoid are sclerosed. So this sclerosis is definitely not related to the pathology that is CSOM. This patient has got a developmentally sclerosed mastoid. So if this, this sclerosis that is the uh, haziness in the mastoid air cells or dissolution of the uh, mastoid air cells would have been on one side, we could have attributed it to the pathology if the other side was a well pneumatized side. All right. Now, what is the importance of doing an X-ray? The importance of doing an X-ray is that number one, it gives us an idea as to what is the extent of the disease. Now, most importantly, the second idea we get about it is the level of the dural plate and the sinus plate. So if you're planning to take this patient for mastoidectomy, the surgeon is a little well prepared about how high or how uh, posterior he has to drill in the mastoid region uh, before he can expect a bleed or a breach in the dura. Of course, it also gives us a good idea about the pathology uh, in the, the mucosal pathology as to uh, the status of middle ear mucosa and the disease extending into the mastoid air cells. However, medical legally, it is not a very uh, important tool. Uh, we do rely in cases of aticoantral disease more on the CT scans of the temporal bone. Another similar x-ray I would like to show you that is x-ray mastoid of an operated patient. I'm going to keep it with the above x-ray. Now if you look at this x-ray, one side of this x-ray that is the right side is showing a sclerosed mastoid. So if let's just revise again, this is the temporomandibular joint, this is the external artery meatus, and this is the sclerosed mastoid, right? Now, if we come on this side, you can see that this side, you are seeing a nice cavity in the mastoid air cells. Now this cavity can be because of either an operation, patient has undergone a mastoidectomy, so they can see a cavity, uh, in a case of cholestitoma, of course, in that case also you can see a cavity or in a case of malignancy. So cavitatory lesions are suggestive of some bony erosion that has taken place inside. It could be iatrogenic, that means patient has history of mastoidectomy or patient, the disease is such like cholestitoma or uh, a case of malignancy where we can see a cavity in the mastoid air cells. All right. So.